from time to time, accidents can happen. You accidentally share one subfolder and it goes to the wrong person. My personal opinion is that just keep it simple, have a good upper level, have a good top level of permissions, and then everything else just, you know, kind of like falls into line under that. Is there a way to choose on a particular folder to specifically select who can see it despite inherent permissions above or a way to set permissions on the user profile? Good question. Google's permissions are not quite as sophisticated as, to get technical here, Linux-based permissions or Windows-based permissions. If you use another operating system, you may be used to being able to block certain users from a particular folder via a, a basically a disallow or a, a negative permission on that folder. You can't do that in Google, unfortunately, on a subfolder. You can set a shared folder at the top level, right at the top of the tree. And with that, you can choose who can access it and by default, who therefore can't access it. But you can't go into subfolder after subfolder and choose who can't access a certain subfolder. Now, Google gives you some really, really cool permissions that live at that shared folder level that let you actually lock down those folders. And my strong recommendation is, is that you just choose smart shared folders and the right group based permissions and you don't bother about using permissions on subfolders outside of the parent of the tree the reason for that is it gets pretty complicated pretty quickly the maintenance and upkeep becomes a pain someone has to be responsible for managing all of that and from time to time accidents can happen you accidentally share one subfolder and it goes to the wrong person my personal opinion is that just keep it simple have a good upper level have a good top level of permissions and then everything else just you know kind of like falls into line under that that's my philosophy if you're interested in that i'll show you a bit more about what that looks like now one of the advantages of using shared drives inside google drive is you can pretty much create as many as you like i think the limit inside a workspace account is in the thousands or possibly even 10,000 shared drives that you can create so you're probably not going to run out of shared drives i don't think you should go too crazy with having hundreds and hundreds but if you wanted to have one shared drive for each one of your customers and have that customer collaborate with you in that shared drive, by all means, spin up a shared drive per customer. It's a great way of doing it and locking down permissions. Now, you'll notice here that when we share shared drives, we very seldom share them with individual people. They're mostly based on group-based permissions. And if you're interested in learning more about how to set up the group-based permissions and then how to apply them to shared drives, I've got a great tutorial on the channel showing you how to do that right from step one all the way through to getting it fully completed. But that's not what I wanna show you right now. What I wanna show you right now is what some of the advanced security features and permissions are available on your individual shared folders. Let's take a look at some of the options that we have available here for our shared drive. So if I right click on a shared drive, we've got the member management, which is the top level of permissions um, that I can change at any time, right? So I'm gonna click onto the member management here, and that's where I set my groups to have certain levels of access to the shared drive. That's pretty straightforward. I've got a number of tutorials on that on the channel already. But the second thing that we get to do with a shared drive, which is very cool, is we can go to shared drive settings, which you may not know are there. It's a bit of an obscure option there. You've got to right click to find it. But shared drive settings will bring up a number of interesting additional settings that we can set on the per shared drive level. So this is on the parent level of the shared drive. So we can click this button or unclick this button to allow someone to access, and I'm not gonna click it right now because it'll change the setting, to access files if they're in or out of my organization. If I wanna lock down a certain shared drive so that only people in my organization can access it, well, I can untick this button and it's gonna disallow anyone outside the organization to access it. Very cool feature, I love that one. Next up, allow people who aren't shared drive members to access files. So by default, when you have a shared drive, if you have a file or a folder within the shared drive, you can individually share that out of the shared drive if you want. So by default, the shared drive is shared to a certain group of people and then the individual files within it can be shared out out. But if you don't want that, if you want to lock down your permissions, so only those who you've defined at the very top level, well, you can untick this and that will lock that down as well. Now, that's great for a training drive. That's great for anything that's got your intellectual property. That's great for a finance drive. That's great for executive documents, anything you want to lock down. Marketing, I leave this one open. I leave these buttons ticked here because I want to be able to share this with people outside the company from time to time. Maybe I share a webinar and I wanna share just the slide deck publicly. Well, I can choose to share an individual file 
outside of the business. So that's why I leave this one ticked for this particular shared drive. Okay, role permissions, allow content managers to share folders. That's a more specific one. A content manager is someone who has the ability to add, remove, delete files. It's basically saying, do you want to allow them to change the permissions on a folder to share it externally? And then finally, I love this feature. You can lock down the ability to download, print or copy files. This one is really great to switch on for your training folder. So let me go and find our training folder. Here we go, right click, share drive settings. You'll see that these two down below here are unticked. Viewers, commenters are not allowed to download, print or copy files. Now, it's not gonna stop somebody from taking a screenshot on their computer. You can't stop that, right? But it will slow them down if they're trying to rip off your business and steal every single file that you have. So back to the question at hand here, you know, how should I use shared drive? Can I lock down certain files within a shared drive? My strong philosophy is this, just set up a shared drive for each different area of your business and I've got a training video on the channel for how to do that. And then you set up the correct permissions based on groups for each area of the business. And then you don't really have to bother locking down certain files or certain folders in the subfolder structure of those that you've got set up. So I probably wouldn't bother with that. That's my recommendation then. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius, or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.